strong enough to have it all, too weak to take it. I love this quote so much because it represents the fact that so many of us know what we should be doing, but we're not getting after it. We're not doing the things we know we should be doing. And I think the point of this quote, strong enough to have it all, too weak to take it, is to remind yourself that you have the knowledge and the wisdom to be as great as you want in whatever you decide to pursue, but the decision and the choice is on you to find out if you're going to take that leap and go for the thing that you've always wanted. And this can apply in any aspect of your life possible, literally anywhere. It could be as small as starting a new hobby, or it could be as big as starting a new business. I think the biggest thing is we all know what we should be doing, but we're not doing it for whatever reason, right? Whether it's procrastination, whether it's fear of failure, whatever it is, it's extremely important to remember that the way to get to where you want to go is by consistently doing the things you know that you should be doing. It's about the repetitions, about the consistency. And I think that's going to build up your confidence as well. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have an episode talking about confidence, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be very important, and it's going to tie into this a lot. I think if you're listening to this, you are somebody who has a good mindset but maybe needs a little bit of a push, right, uh, to get to where you want to go, uh, maybe the right direction, etc. But a lot of you guys know what you should be doing. You guys are all very smart. And I think it's up to you guys to take the leap of faith, right? You can watch as many of these videos as you want. You can consume as much content, short form, whatever it is. But a decision is on you. Another thing I have written down here is looking in the future and wondering if this thing and the sacrifice you have to make is worth the regret and the risk that you're willing to go up against. So, in life we're all going to have regrets, but life is about choosing the regrets that you can live with rather than the ones you can't live without. What I mean by this is, you know, in economics, for example, it's super simple opportunity cost. If you do one thing, then you can't do another thing, right? If you go to the supermarket, you can't go to the gym, and vice versa. So using the same principle, think about this with um, your regret. So if you do this one thing, are you going to regret it more than not doing it? If you want to start playing baseball, are you going to regret never playing baseball when you're older, right? Or pretend you're older, right? I think I worded that a little bit weird, but pretend you're older and you always want to play baseball, but you never got to it. Are you going to regret that thing that you never started more than whatever else you were doing at the time or not? And this is super important to think about because it helps you gauge whether or not this thing is important. If you will not regret not, or if you'll, yeah, if you'll not regret not playing baseball, then it's not that important to you. And it's not that big of a deal if you don't play it. However, if you want to start something, say a business, and you're like, oh my God, I really want to start this thing. And in a couple of years, I'm not going to have time. I'm going to regret it. I just know I will start the thing because you can tell how important it is to you, especially with the justification that you use to tell yourself why you should be doing that thing in the first place. So choose your regrets, ladies and gentlemen, super important. Another huge thing is self-limiting beliefs. And I actually have a very interesting perspective on this from somebody that I heard from. So this isn't my direct words, but it's something I'm going to be implementing a lot. I don't know who exactly said this, but this particular person was talking about low confidence. A lot of people say, okay, I'm not confident in this thing. I, you know, I have low confidence. The thing is, and I wrote this down, you have a pattern of assumptions. You're not low confidence. You just have an abundance of negative serving thoughts. So, the problem isn't your low confidence, quote unquote, because your low confidence is a result of the thing that you think is causing this to begin with. So you guys think that your low confidence gives you these negative or low serving thoughts, but it's the other way around. Your negative serving thoughts, your thoughts that are going against you are the things that are making you have low confidence to begin with. So I'm going to just go over that really quickly again. It was a little bit wordy. So, you know, a lot of people say they have low confidence. 
and from them having low confidence, they have these, you know, negative serving beliefs about themselves. Oh, I can't do this thing, right? If you have low confidence in a thing, then it doesn't translate to other things for you. Like, oh, I don't have confidence for this thing. And I was never able to do this thing to begin with. But the thing is, confidence comes from doing the thing and actually getting after it. So your negative serving thoughts, you saying to yourself, I'm never going to be able to do this, is the exact thing that's causing this low confidence. Now, this isn't an episode again about confidence. Like I told you guys, I'm going to have an episode about it soon. It's going to involve this, and it's going to be a lot more in-depth, so stay tuned. stay tuned for that. Jeez, can't speak English. Um, but yeah, I think that's very important to, be, to understand. And um, kind of circulating, going back to my first point about you know what's good for you. You know, your negative serving beliefs you know are hindering you and your ability to succeed in the thing that you want. So why not just attack it? You know that this thing is holding you back. Right. If you ever catch yourself saying, oh, I'm not good at this thing, you wouldn't think to yourself, oh, well, that was a good thought. I'm happy. I'm happy that I think that way. Right. You need to find a way to get this thought. Right. These words, the actions maybe you take to not work against you. Flip them. You know what's good for you. So you know that these things in exact contrast is not good for you. So three things I went over is having a good mindset. Second thing is choosing your regrets, right? You want to be able to choose the regrets that you can live with rather than the ones that you can't live without. Always think about something before you're going to do it and whether or not you're going to regret it. Choose the regrets that you can live with rather than the ones that you can't live without. You know that you want to start this business and you know in four years you're going to be extremely busy or five years, whatever, and you're not going to have time to do it. Start it right now, right? But if you think to yourself, oh, you know, this is always something I wanted to try, but as time went on, I'm just like, this is, I don't really want to do this. Then don't do it, right? You're always going to have regrets, remember. Second thing I talked about, just kind of a, another point was, or the third thing, sorry, just low confidence in general, self-limiting beliefs, and having this pattern of assumptions. And this low confidence is not, or it's not caused by low confidence, but your negative serving beliefs. Strong enough to have it all, too weak to take it. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you give this podcast a follow and a five stars wherever you're listening to this on, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever. Thank you so much. And I hope to catch you guys soon. Thank you.